to my channel so it's me Shabri. I'm coming to you guys today with a talk through get ready with me video on how I elevate my makeup look to take a naturally enhanced makeup look to something that looks a little bit more expensive using really simple tips and tricks you guys. Now these are tips and tricks that I've learned um, throughout my years of freelancing through other veteran artists within the industry and then just from trial and error on my own. You guys are going to be a little bit like blown away as to how these simple tips and tricks can elevate your makeup look. If you are looking to take your makeup look to the next level, definitely stay tuned to this video so you guys can see how I achieved this look. If you like these type of videos, make sure you thumbs up for more. If you have any questions, leave them below in my comment section and I'll be sure to answer those for you. And of course, I will list below in my description box all of the products that I'm using to get this look, to achieve this look. So if you guys are wondering what I'm using, make sure you're checking out the description box. Everything is listed there. And yeah, let's get right into this tutorial, you guys. I've already moisturized and primed my face. I'm going in now with some foundation. I'm using two foundations today. I'm using the Maybelline, what is this? It's not Maybelline. The L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow 24-hour um, foundation in the shade Coco. This came out a few years ago. Um, so I'm using this and I'm mixing it with some Becca just for more coverage. But I really do need my beauty blender to blend this in. So hold on, y'all. So I have my beauty blender so I can go ahead and... So yeah, that's what I'm using for foundation. I'm applying it with the beauty blender, you guys. As I've been doing makeup, I've noticed more so that the less makeup you apply, the better it looks. And that's like with any situation. <laughs> Honestly, I know a lot of people um, prefer the more trendier makeup, makeup that's more full coverage. But that's not really the makeup that I like to do. And a lot of my clients that I have, the clientele that I have, the brides that I do, a lot of them also prefer more skin-like or natural makeup. Now, once everything is completed, you will look glamorous. Just because I'm saying it's natural makeup doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to get your money's worth. Like, you're definitely going to get a beat, but it's not going to look cakey and clownish and yeah. So all I'm doing now, you guys, is just pressing the foundation into my skin. Again, normally I would use a brush for this, but I've been liking my beauty blender once again to apply foundation. I used to use it when I first started doing makeup. And then as I graduated to like more foundations and more brushes, I just stopped using the beauty blender to apply foundation, but I don't like it again. And it also helps to pick up very little foundation when you are applying it with Beauty Blender. That way you don't have too much product to work with and the sponge isn't working too hard and like soaking up a lot of that foundation. So I like to pick up a little bit of foundation and go from there. I'm still just pressing this into my skin. You guys can see how this foundation literally just melts into your skin when you take your time work on like one section of your face at a time and again just use very little product i'm actually liking the foundation it's a really pretty formula i like it more when mixed with the becca foundation my becca because it just gives me a little bit more coverage but the um l'oreal foundation itself is 24 hours so it is going to be a um long wearing foundation and the becca just adds some coverage for me so i like that I like to take foundation over my eyelids as well, you guys, just a little bit. I talk about this in every video, but I do have um, hyperpigmentation or darkness or dark circles around my eyes, whatever you want to call it. I have it as well as a lot of African-American women or women of color. So it's not anything to be ashamed of. It can be adjusted with makeup. So see how my skin just looks nice and smooth. It doesn't look, it looks, still looks like skin. If you guys can see that, like it still looks as though my skin is kind of breathing. Yes, the color is a little bit off because I'm matching myself to the rest of my body. My face is darker than the rest of my um, body, but the texture, the consistency, like it just, it looks really good. I 
Okay, so now that I have my foundation on, from here, I like to move on to concealer, you guys. I picked up a new concealer um, a few weeks back. I've been trying it out and I fell in love with it the first time I tried it out. It's actually the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. So it's not a new concealer, but it's new to me. I know Pretty Breed loves this concealer and the first time I tried it, I immediately saw why she loved the concealer. I like to use two shades for my skin tone. I use... Um, shades deep 50 or no deep dark 50 and then dark 40 so basically i use shades 40 and 50 it gives me somewhat of a close match to my highlight tone or the tone i like to use for my highlight and it's super creamy now i will say this concealer is um similar to the nars creamy radiant concealer it's just that the color pop in my opinion is a little bit more full coverage than the nars concealer so I like to place it on the back of my hand. I don't like to apply it straight to my face. I like to make a little concoction and lay it on my face like real strategically with the applicator, with a little sponge. So that's what I'm doing on the back of my hand. If you guys are wondering why I'm looking down, and I like to work with a little bit of product at a time. Like I told y'all, less is going to be more to give you like a fresh and seamless makeup look. So that's what we're doing, just laying down the highlight and then I'll go out to blend it, I'll go in to blend it out once everything's laid down. And I'm going in pressing motion, you guys, not really swiping, just pressing to lay the product down. I like to do a little bit of blending with this bunch to kind of feather out the end the outer edges of the highlighted areas before I go with my beauty blender to make sure everything is seamless there's no lines no um splotchy areas so far it looks like that everything the light may be overexposing me okay I don't know hopefully my light is the lighting in here is right I hope it is I'm sorry if it's off you guys for the rest of my face I highlight that as well such as my forehead my chin my nose Using the same method I use for my under eye. The reason why I do this is because the light hits my face there and I'm basically just highlighting where the light will normally hit my face. I do kind of like highlight above my lip. Again, I have hyperpigmentation, I'm darker around my mouth area. So I like to add somewhat of highlight back to that area. Okay, so from here, I'm pretty much highlighted as much as I want to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just blend out the outer edges. So wherever else is highlighted, like my chin area above my lip, I'll lightly bounce the Beauty Blender over that area to make sure it's blended in. But when I go under my eye, I don't do too much um, blending right underneath the eye because I want to make sure that concealer stays in place to give me the coverage that I need in those areas. So see, like I'm just tapping right on the outer edges to blend that out that way. And for this area, I'm more so just tapping on the side of my nose, if you guys can see that. From here, we can go in to add back a little bit of more to our skin using contour shades. This step, you guys, is optional. And I say that because on a normal day, I would not cream contour. I would just bronze or contour with like powder. But for the sake of the video, I'll do a little bit of contouring. So I'm using the darkest shade in my um, MAC palette with a very small brush to start with contouring the side of my nose. Before I even go onto the side of my nose with this brush, I'm going to rub some of that product off on the back of my hand because I don't want to use too much product, especially in my nose area. From here you guys, you can make your nose as contoured as you like, as pinched as you like. I don't want to overdo it. And sometimes I get a little bit afraid that it's 
too pinched so i like to go on top of it with my beauty blender just to soften things up again i'm the makeup artist that prefers more of a soft and just subtle type of makeup look i'm actually not going to do any more cream contouring i will just bronze up the rest of my face but i do want to add some more highlight underneath my eye before i set it um i kind of highlight in steps if that makes sense if you are um if y'all watch a lot of my makeup videos you guys should already know um, i like to layer my highlight i am setting it with my ysl and derma blend powder i'm using a wayne gloss um i believe number two brush to set the concealer in place With that same powder, I'm gonna set my forehead area. The only thing I'm not gonna directly set is down the bridge of my nose. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of bronze up my skin a little bit. I'm using, to start out, I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown Bronzing Powder in the shade Deep. I love this bronzing powder, it's super matte. It has no um, reflex of anything in it. But I like the color that it gives me, so. I use this first before I use my CoverGirl. And then you guys, I'm going to go in with the CoverGirl Full Spectrum Bronzer. This is in the shade Ebony Bronze. It's the same um, formula and color as the um, Ebony Queen Bronzer. I'm just going to go in further deepen my contour areas. That's it. I'm gonna go in now to tone my highlighted areas using my Iman powder. It helps to make sure that where I set is not too um, powdery. It's the correct tone, it's not too ashy looking. That's better. I'm gonna go with a little bit of the bronzing powder and a smaller brush to kind of add some more depth back to my nose. Um, not my nose contour, but right in this area. I like to add bronzer there. And that's one of the reasons I do my brows last, because I like to get all up in my brow bone <laughs> with the bronzer. It just helps to further um, accentuate your nose contour. So I like doing this step. And once you put on lashes and a brow, like you really notice this right here in a good way. Like it looks so nice. It's like a little finishing touch to your makeup that kind of elevates your makeup a little bit. It's little things that takes your makeup from like, you know, the beginner level to more of a pro status. Just little things that you can add to your makeup routine. One thing that I've been doing lately that I haven't um, done in quite some time is to go in with my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish and just sweep that over my entire face. So I'm gonna do my brows at lashes off camera and then I'll come back to do the last finishing touches of today's quick face. Okay you guys, so I've applied my lashes off camera brows I put on. I did apply some setting powder underneath my eye to catch any fallout from the little bit of eye makeup that I did. And I also put some um, down the bridge of my nose just to kind of get that to stand out just a little bit more. So with um, this powder still on my face, I'm gonna go ahead and add some finishing touches. I like to do like an orange tone type blush. It looks really good on women of color. So I'm using Max Raisin on that same wing gloss brush. I also like to mirror whatever I do on the lower half of my face or on the left side of my face or the right side of my face. So I like to mirror what I do on the lower half of my face to the top half of, half of my face. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the blush right alongside like the contour. So it looks really, really nice in pictures, you guys, when you have like that flush of a little bit of color on your skin that also shows up on your cheek area. Like it's just so pretty. 
that's just another thing that kind of elevates the makeup look even though we're doing like a less of a makeup type look adding those little steps will elevate the look even more from here i can now go ahead to brush off this powder so from here i am going to add some glow there was a point of time um where i just stopped adding highlighter period because it was just a little bit too much i do it occasionally but i really add a little bit of product i don't overglow unless my client specifically asks for that i'm just gonna put a little bit on the apples of my cheek and this is the mac um cheeky bronze highlighter it adds a nice subtle glow from here i'm gonna add some lips using chestnut liner I'm gonna add some gloss to that and I'm using a buxom gloss. Did I tell y'all what um this was a naked Anastasia or a liquid lipstick by Anastasia in the shade naked. I'm going on top with buxom gloss in the shade Dolly. I'm gonna set my face. Okay, ladies, so that's it. I went off camera, I added some earrings, basically kind of swept my hair a little bit down, kind of wrapped it down a little bit more. And this is the finished look, you guys. Adding a nice pair of elegant earrings will definitely enhance any makeup look that you're doing, especially if you're going out for a night on town, you're wearing an outfit that's a little bit more casual, but you still want to look glamorous in the face. You can pair a really nice pair of earrings with the makeup look. It'll definitely help your face to stand out more. It makes you look a little bit more dressed up, even though um, your clothing or your attire may be a little bit more casual or, you know, a little bit more dressed down. That's pretty much what I do, you guys, to get a expensive look makeup look but still keeping the makeup really minimum i will list the products that i use in my description box and until my next video i will see you all later thank you for watching bye